colleagues. My name is Dudziro Nengu. I'm presenting from Zimbabwe Midlands State University, the Gender Institute on peace education in Africa, looking at the role of games, visual arts and crafts in enhancing peace education in Africa. So the presentation is going to explore the role and value of games, visual arts and crafts in enhancing both formal and informal peace education processes in Africa, focusing on country case studies from Southern and West Africa. I am going also to explore the power of games, visual arts and crafts for formal and informal education in Africa and noting how they engage people in interactive, inclusive and creative ways to enable them to explore intricate issues in a relaxed and more accessible manner. Some things that wouldn't have been able to be talked about or conveyed or even explored are explored through the arts in peace education. <coughs> Sorry. Do you need any help? I am having a challenge here in moving my slides, but I'm still like, trying just, to do just that. Click, just, just click outside the box. That's why. Click outside the box. Yes, you should be able to click outside the box. You are still clicking on the text. Click outside the box at the edge of your presentation. You should be able to just click at the head and All right. use. Okay. Good. Yes. Yes. Okay. okay. So, what is peace education? So, I'm talking about any theoretical and practical underpinnings for eliminating conflict and violence in order to establish a culture of peace and positive conflict transformation. This is according to UNESCO. A peace education also promotes the theoretical and practical aspects of knowledge and skills that have to be operationalized to minimize, manage, and resolve, as well as transform conflicts. And by a culture of peace, we refer to any process or a theory that can enable broken relations to mend, that can sustain uh, existing relationships in good standing and prevent reoccurrence of conflict. A culture of peace uh, presents a set of values, attitudes and non-violent behaviors and lifestyles that uphold dialogue and negotiation among individuals groups and states, it provides the means of addressing the root causes of conflict. So peace education does not help people to eliminate conflict per se, but rather to raise their awareness of the inevitability of conflict in human life, as well as their knowledge and skills. So it upskills people's capabilities to use non-violent means to transform conflicts from their violent forms to a, 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 a desired and transformational and transformative peace. <laughs> Deriving from the concept of negative peace, which connotes the absence of bloody war, we also talk about positive peace, which implies the presence of transformative institutions that promote just societies and relationships in society. So positive peace focuses on addressing the root causes of conflict and on promoting sustainable peace 
which is transformative, which brings relations together and which develops the relevant institutions for sustaining the peace. So relevant topics for peace education include conflict transformation, dialogue, traditional values, tolerance, human rights, sexuality, including SRHR, the, the value of women's SRHR rights and the value of protecting women from abuses during conflicts, including prevention of gender-based violence, environmental education, climate change adaptation, which is gender inclusive, among other topics. And what is the ethic of peace education? The irony of peace education is that if it is not properly done, it has potential to cause conflict and war. So to avoid a confusion that can lead to conflict during peace education processes, the focus and topics of peace education and peace programs have to be expertly tailor-made to suit different contexts. There's, there is need to create a balance. <laughs> There's need to balance peace education project scopes and objectives with the culture and context where the peace education is happening. So I'm talking here about the concept of conflict sensitivity, which requires peace actors policies and programs to be sensitive to conflict and cultural dynamics. I also talk about the UN United Nations do no harm principle, which likewise calls for interventions that pose no harm or risk of heightening conflicts to the polity. I talk also of gender equality and inclusion processes. I talk of intersectionality the realization of the rights of the marginalized and the rights of various players, especially people who have made vulnerable by conflict, by default, women and girls and the elderly. So for the background uh, section, the arguments here sought to defeat Meredith's postulation that she made in 2006 that uh, Africans prior to colonialism were illiterate and innumerate. Uh, so Meredith's postulation insinuates that it is colonialism that brought light to the Africans. It insinuates that the Africans had no way of expressing their peace before colonialism is the kind of dark edges concept. And this is what I am countering in order to decolonize the conception of peace, education processes, and enlightenment about Africa. I argue that Africans have their own mode of education, including mode of peace education, no matter how informal it can be described, given that perhaps there was no technological advancement and documentation of processes, but Africans had their way of documenting and expressing their peace and education processes. For example, they could paint rocks as signage uh, for communication, and for communicating, connecting with each other during war, during hunting escapades, uh, they could communicate on the rocks and people would follow and be able to discover each other's movements. So they had their own language of passing and interpreting written communication for peace. Africans used some form of measurement that made their tools standard and functional in their own language that they understood the rock paintings. <laughs> uh, even talking about ability of Africans to count, Africans brewed like beer from wild fruits 
they preserved different forms of food that they used for food security and creating community cohesion and good nutrition in the communities. And these processes that they did for food preservation required some, count, some form of counting and you know, measurements that an informal algorithm that they used in order to process their proceeds for food nutrition, food security, community enhancement, and so on and so forth. So indeed, Africans had a way of communicating. Even in terms of counting, Africans had an African indigenous mode of counting which was based on head counts. And it was done, you know, through song as I grew up as a little girl, I first knew how to count from one to 10 through song using the, using the head counts. Like Motsiro, Dendere, Wagara, Masang, Mbirimbija, Pamromo, Pegari, Kariza, Chindori, Gumilawa. Africans also had their own African alphabet. We can go to Egypt and talk about the African alphabet and other ways of uh, evidence that includes ancient civilization in temples, uh, the existence of scientifically constructed stone ruins in Egypt and Zimbabwe, the great Zimbabwe ruins, which is still a center of marvel and attraction. No one can explain how the ruins were constructed which shows lots of African prowess. So colonialism did not bring education for advancement only. It, it found Africa advanced and advancing in its own way. It only brought a certain form of education and school system that thought to thwart existing uh, education systems and perceptions of indigenous knowledge systems. And the irony of the nationalist wars of liberation in Africa is that uh, they, they utilized violence to counter violence. But at the same time, there was a lot of peace education through song, through dance, through storytelling to counter the propaganda that was going on in the radios. radios. And this was happening in the bush by the liberators to counter the violence of war and instill a sense of peace education that was connected to indigenous knowledge systems, knowing, however, that they did this in a very difficult and challenging situation of war. But the prominent argument that I am bringing out is peace education through dance, arts, oral tradition persisted even during the war to the post-liberation uh, period. We can talk also of the rise of the negritude movement through poetry, both in, in the diaspora and back home in Africa, the black consciousness movement, which all formed part of a national, uh, an African uh, nationalism and, and doctrine of peace education. Uh, another point in the background is that although it sounds similar to education in general, this education is different from conventional education in that it lays the foundation for eradication of war. While conventional education can lay the foundation for war, for scientific developments that can cause mass destruction, this education aims at eradicating war. Even during those violent dialogue processes, peace education is prominent for its call on non-violence. <clears throat> so given the complicated conflict conundrum in Africa, peace education is imperative to enable cohesion and continuity, to enable inclusion of the marginalized, to enable African democratic processes that are homegrown and relevant to the people to support the youth to build their identity in a world that is perpetuating division and loss of identity, and also to help the women find their voices and safe spaces in a confused 
mess. So the, for, for the conceptual framework, I used two theories, the conflict transformation theory by Paul Lederach, uh, which stipulates that conflicts thrive on sy systemic practices that build deep sealed incongruities and imbalances in society, leading to systems of injustice and oppression. The conflict transformation theory proposes a transformational approach to peace building and peace education processes, where the indigenous people's traditions, history and culture become key in fostering the required indigenous knowledge systems and practices that are required for effective relationship building and approaches that are relevant for transforming the system of injustice and oppression, as well as to build an own shared lasting peace in a post-conflict phase. The conflict transformation theory is a silent, salient critique of the liberal peace theory, uh, which gives an overly internationalized view to the peace education narrative to an extent where critical peace pedagogy is underpinned by a European culture and legacy that privileges the West as an enlightener as rational and emancipating while Africa is presented as a passive learner of what the European peace models present. <clears throat> but when you look at it in reality, the claimed European enlightenment, instead of helping people build their stronger foundations, it produces a group of African scholars who mimic Europeans and derogate their own cultural identities, including language and style, in a manner that causes violence and conflict. The second theory that I look at is a Goldman's theory of emotional intelligence which complicates, which complements the conflict transformation theory by supporting relationship building that leads to transformation from chaos, from hurt, frustrations towards tranquility, egalitarianism, happiness, well-being, and inclusion. Emotional intelligence, the ability of individuals to recognize their feelings and thoughts and those of others for motivation and management of emotions for themselves and their relationships with others helps people to guide their thinking and actions towards peace, nonviolence, and harmony. So a number of peace education researchers have established an intricate connection between both formal and formal pedagogy, artistic expressions, in the development of emotional intelligence in humans. And these scholars are listed there, it's quite a number and many more. So for the study methods, I use I tri triangulated uh, two methods, uh, the desk review, which I did through a scoping method to gather secondary data where I searched for 150 articles online using specific thematic terms related to the topic study. And I eliminated 65 articles after going through the 150 selected articles, eliminated 65 because they were not within the inclusion criteria. And I progressed uh, with 85 articles to the final screening stage. During screening stage, through a thorough reading of the abstract and introduction sections and the conclusion, I found 13 more articles to be irrelevant and further discarded them. And I remained with 72 articles. And these are the ones that I used to do a thorough review content analysis in order to gather secondary data for the study. The second methods 
method was WhatsApp and telephone interviews with peace educated, educators and, and those who benefit from peace education in both formal and informal peace building settings in Zimbabwe. I selected 12 participants, including six women peace educators, three formal peace scholars, and three other peace educators to gather secondary and pri pri I mean to gather primary data to complement the secondary data gathered through this, the literature review. So the inclusion criteria for the interview participants, they had six of them had to be women who are either peace educators or peace learners who have knowledge of peace education processes. And the others had to be either men or women, including youths who are either peace educators or peace learners with knowledge of peace education processes. For the key findings, the study established that traditionally in Africa, art was an active part of the lives of the polity both in the private and public domains. It established that different forms of art were used to preserve and transmit knowledge on the historical foundations of Africa across generations. And this was for general knowledge, for entertainment, and also for, for preservation of indigenous knowledge systems to posterity. Education was artistically conveyed as part of the African people's oral tradition through storytelling, song and dance in families and in gatherings as part of the evening entertainment, but also as part of the African education philosophy. Family or community gatherings for storytelling and oral poetry sessions motivated an affinity for traditional performance and an understanding of Africa's principles, beliefs, and philosophies. Songs, dance, and drama was, were practiced for both entertainment and education, commenting on important social matters. And in some instances, social deviants were, were told off in song, dance, and drama to an extent that people took these warnings seriously and would, where possible, State the, stop their deviant behaviors. So these messages were so important that they had potential to influence a culture of, of peace and stop possible wars and conflicts. So currently, if we look at drama and peace education, we find that evening gatherings for oral tradition have been replaced by other spaces like family television settings, internet settings where people are watching what different modes of song, drama, and, and a, a film on their phones and other gadgets. But still that aspect of drama a, as peace education is still conveyed through drama, I, through television and other media. So documented drama is still similarly useful to make comment on serious political issues like in the past, issues that would have been too sensitive to talk about in everyday life. If you look at Wole Shoenka and the political issues that he explored in Nigeria, this is just to mention one, one writer, but there are so many in the Zimbabwean context. If you look at Sabu Varazipi, a, a comic on television, he comments on serious issues that would be hard and dangerous to talk about. So just to mention a few, among women peace builders, there is also use of community theater, even amongst the youth, a useful tool for educating communities and for sharing sensitive knowledge and information uh, based on society's lived experiences with both survivors and perpetrators in the same context in a transformative manner. 
if we look at drawings and we talk of Paulo, Paulo Freire's functional literacy concept of drawings and paintings as stimulants for emotional intelligence and alleviators of stress and, and trauma. Is, this concept is still functional today in uh, drawings and paintings. In Rwanda, for example, post the genocide, the Art for Peace Project initiative provided a good opportunity for secondary school students across the country to take part in the National School Arts Competition, where they explored issues of peace and reconciliation in this very difficult context, but being able to do it in a manner that brought social cohesion into existence and that made people be able to deal with difficult situations in a subtle manner. So thematic artistic expressions reflect peace, unity, culture, and development. They inspire and remind the citizens across generations of shared human values that catalyze the commitment to peaceful existence and development. I've got a drawing there, a beautiful library, and a student interview testified how constantly looking at the library drawing helped him to come out of trauma that was preventing him from concentrating on his studies for a very long time. So we see it as a stimulant of emotional intelligence. The other category was women's crafts. And the study established that women's craft centers uh, provide peace spaces for safe spaces for exploring livelihoods. The concept of safe, safe spaces is a gender concept that in is, that means that other spaces may not necessarily be safe for women because there's lots of violence and lots of exclusion going there. But when women find their own spaces to explore their artistic skills, that becomes a safe space for exploring livelihoods. And an alternative is space and practice for social learning and for envisioning a liberating narrative for peace. In colonial Africa, Women often specialized in various crafts. <clears throat> and in today's world, women have turned the same crafts into a specialized skill that brings capital while adding value to a social understanding of alternative narratives for transformative engagements. And also as spaces that isolate the women's species, species into a a domain of their own to explore possibilities for peace that is feminized. So we can talk about the decolonizing education for peace in Africa initiative project, which is across the continent. And I can talk about the one in Zimbabwe and Zambia, uh, which provides intergenerational links for new perspective for understanding peace in marginalized communities in Zimbabwe. It's happening in Binga. It brings together women from across the generations. It's a learning space for upskilling and also for passing on indigenous knowledge systems for craft from the elderly to the youths. And it's an investment initiative that enables a marketing exchanges between Zimbabwe and Zimbabwe. Zambia, and it is based in a very marginalized community in Binga. People who would have been left out of economic and social processes, but lots of transformation is happening because of this women's initiative. We also looked at song as a category, the drum there, the woman play, playing the drum, and the drum as a conveyor of peace. I, we, the study established in a certain community how the drum brought together men and women to talk about issues of gender-based violence that were happening in that particular community. When women staged a peaceful presentation for three nights, three days, non-stop, similar to the Liberia thing with Charles Taylor, 
but they were staging it near a traditional chief's homestead to protest against a man who was doing systematic and systemic gender-based violence until the chief summoned the women and the men in the village to resolve the issue in a gender-sensitive manner. Football and netball also is another category, a, a tool used to promote peace and to convey knowledge and messages for peace in Africa. And there's been a successful initiative in many countries. For example, the Football for Peace program in Sierra Leone, Liberia, and Rwanda. And football also was tagged the first public event that brought people from different ethnic groups together after the genocide in Rwanda. So difficult to talk about, but made better because we can now talk about it through football, which enables a narrative to talk about things we wouldn't have talked about. So in conclusion, <coughs> the study established a wealth of literature on how games, artistic expressions have defined and enriched the purview of formal and informal peace education in various countries in Africa. It established evidence on the usage of games and arts as a pathway for education from traditional Africa to date, with the arguments dispelling the myths that education and peace education are foreign imports. Established developments from traditional forms of education to the current technology-aided forms of education. For example, how women's crisis groups are making use of technology to convey issues of gender-based violence, to report to the police during the day and night, a technology has become an enabler for peace a, and cohesion and for bringing perpetrators to book, especially if it's used by women and different forms of art were used to preserve and transmit knowledge on the historical foundations of Africa across generations for general knowledge and for entertainment and for knowledge preservation. Thank you. These are my submissions. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. What a beautiful presentation. Thank you. Thank you. I think for a fact, I can confirm to you that, you know, games, artistic expression has actually bring about peaceful quest, peaceful coexistence within diverse of intra or inter-ethnic group in Africa. I'm also from Africa. I can attest to this, you know, research, hypothesis, and theories. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for the beautiful presentation. Thank you. Thank you for your kind words. Yeah. Do we have any question, questions, suggestions, contribution? Do we have questions? In the absence of no, I think it's high time we invite the next speaker for this occasion. Permit me to invite and welcome the Presenter from Austin Peay State University, United States of America, Mario Wakiwani. 